Hey, we're just getting ready for uh, one of our monthly podcasts, uh, Building Bridges with Greg Johnson. I hope you're checking that out and enjoying that. Um, But I had an experience this last weekend that made me think a lot about our last video uh, that we did on Worldview. Uh, I was heading from uh, a hotel to a church. Uh, I was at a pastor's conference uh, this last weekend. And as I got into a conversation with our Uber driver about God and going to church, um, it, it came up, the whole subject came up of, of how a person goes to heaven. And uh, this gentleman let me know that he thought that good people go to heaven and that there are many paths to God. There's many religions that will take you to the same place uh, many ways to heaven. And uh, I countered a little bit and talked about the fact that Jesus said he was the only way to heaven. And he just, you know, spoke back and said, no, I, I just don't buy that. I think if you're a good person, you're going to heaven. And here he was claiming to be a, a Christian, a Catholic Christian. And, uh, and it really kind of got me thinking a little bit more about the nature of worldview and truth. Um, there are some aspects of our worldview that we craft around our own value system and our beliefs and we negotiate those with other people in a give and take kind of way where we acknowledge that certain people believe things differently than us and we show them love and respect as we try to influence them. But when the issues become more critical, more of the core value nature, um, when the question of heaven or hell is at stake or a belief system that would condemn somebody or save somebody, how do we deal with those levels of question? A lot of people think that being a good person means you get to go to heaven. Uh, That's a pretty general consensus view out there, even among a lot of Bible-believing Christians. Is that what the Bible teaches? It's not what I understand the Bible to teach. I understand the Bible to teach that you must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So as we engage those two different worldviews, how do we move into those deeper waters of more troubling truth. Because indeed, truth is exclusive. You can't, as we talked about last time, believe that something is true and not true at the same time. There are not many ways to heaven and at the same time, only one way to heaven. How do we navigate those kinds of more difficult issues when it comes to our worldview? So when it comes to a discussion of worldview, and understanding the importance of navigating those differences that we have with one another in dialogue. Uh, There are realities to the fact that some issues are much more significant than others. Uh, Maybe one person likes living in the cold Arctic and another person likes to live in the warm tropics and they can try to persuade one another, but ultimately their opinion, whatever they want, is fine. But what if the issues are more serious than that? What if it moves beyond an opinion or a preference and it moves into an issue of an exclusive truth claim? Now, in a Christian worldview, there isn't a tru- uh, there's a truth claim or an exclusive claim that Jesus Christ is the only way. Even if people believe that there are many paths to God or many ways to heaven, uh, according to Jesus, there is only one way because he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to my Father but through me. So you see, there is a a kind of a law of non-contradiction question here. Uh, The truth that there are many ways to heaven cannot be the same as the truth claim that there is only one way to heaven. So how do we know? How do we know whether my Uber driver is right and there are many ways to God, or whether my claim that there is only one way to God is true? How do I know that I shouldn't follow the way of Islam or Judaism or uh, Buddhism or Hinduism. Uh, There are many religious paths. If it doesn't really matter, you can kind of believe whatever you want. But the problem with that is, is those beliefs very much contradict with one another. It would be hard to say that somebody who says he's a Christian believes the same thing as someone who says he's a Muslim. They have very different views of God. They have very different views of salvation. They have different views of morality and truth. And it's, it's not possible to say that it's all the same path to God. It's very different. So how do I know? And the answer to that question would be simply this. It's an empty tomb. From a Christian worldview perspective, because Jesus Christ didn't stay dead, religious leader, 
His body was not found in the tomb. If that claim is a historical fact, that Jesus Christ lived, died, and then rose again and defeated death and sin once and for all, then that makes the claim of Jesus Christ true and exclusive above all other ideas. And my Uber friend is wrong. There are not many paths to God. There are not many ways to God. There's only one way to God. That's the Christian worldview. Now I was asked, or actually told this week by a person on Facebook that because I wasn't a Catholic, I couldn't be truly saved. I take issue with that, because why? The question isn't whether or not I go to the right church, or whether I attend the right religion, or whether I do the right ritual, or obey the right commandments. The issue is, is Jesus Christ, and believing in Him, and receiving Him, and being His uh, disciple, the only way to heaven? That's what Christianity claims, that's what Christianity teaches, and it cannot be true that is true and something else that is the opposite is true at the same time. Again, that's the law of non-contradiction. So from a Christian worldview point of view, truth is exclusive. It is not meant to be offensive, but I understand that it can be. But truth is exclusive. And if there is only one way to be saved, if there's only one name given under heaven or earth by which a man can be saved, and that name is Jesus, then that is the exclusive truth of the Christian worldview.